Hi guys, and welcome back to an architecture tour of Half-Life 2. I am Simon, and we are in an old sewer. I think we are in an old sewer or drainage tunnel of some sort, which is uh, very, very conveniently placed here. You have no idea just how convenient it is, because we have made our way through City 17 Ravens flying up, leading our gaze upwards at the Citadel So here we are, we are finally at the Combine Citadel And hmm, I think we can get a better view Well this guy didn't do too well Oh the, <laughs> the health packs did not save him Well, we can. Whoa, rocks. We can talk a bit about how the citadel engages with the ground. Or, I guess more appropriately, how it doesn't engage with the ground. I mean, there's this giant hole over here. I mean, we can we can say a lot about it, right? I mean, it, it doesn't sit on the ground. It doesn't touch the ground. It kind of plunges into the ground like a, like a sort of a some sort of a spear or a sword, you know, stabbing itself into the earth. You know, that that's the the violent imagery we have here and then of course there's a thatch, so it's always I don't know. Well, I don't know what that could be for, but obviously it's not sitting nicely, right? It is continuing continuously hammering itself into the ground and if we you know go back to the penis metaphor I don't know if you want to go back to the penis metaphor but you can almost say that it's you know it's, it's raping our planet and the combine are raping our planet for the resources according to the game story so you know there's a lot of inherent violence implied in, in this you know arrangement the fact that it doesn't sit nicely on, on the ground. And it's... Yeah, yeah, basically it, it looks like... something violent has occurred here, or something deeply unnatural. Of course, you know, click caves like these are... are usually unnatural, although sinkholes do exist. Uh, we meant to jump over there. Yep. So yeah, we're inside the combine wall, and there's bridges and all that, which is kind of cool. Yeah, so the, the constant hammering, right, you see. So it's very unambiguously hostile in the way it treats the ground. Here, we'll... let's move in. Okay. Major fracture detected. I guess I wasn't supposed to jump at quite that time. I mean, maybe it's mining for something, like maybe it's mining for resources. Although I wouldn't, you know, I can't imagine why it would need to. Let's try not to get squashed. I mean, there's a lot of implied machinery and then sort of violent industrial hammering of things. I mean, we don't know what it's for, I don't think... I don't think Valve knows what it's for, other than to make noise and then shake the ground and... 
make everything seem very hostile and very intimidating. Again, the verticality. We've talked about verticality before, but the idea that you know it uh, the overpowering imagery and and the and the, and the sense of being dwarfed by this huge thing. We see it throughout the citadel. Everything in the citadel is very, very vertical and very, very tall. Just to make you feel small. So, you know, both ways, both up and down. Uh, that's the wrong way, I think. It's also... You know, I don't... Well, okay, there's a rail, I guess. They're bringing prisoners in. Although, where, where they're coming from and where we're going, we're not sure. Oh, this bit. I think it's further up ahead. So... They're being taken that way, and we are also going that way. I think there are people in those. Oh, they're empty. So they're being <laughs> electrocuted. Although there's no one in them. Let's see, where are we going? Not this way. Not that way. This way. There's only one way to go in the end. There's only one actual path. So... I mean, not much of a puzzle. We need to get on the side that's not getting electrocuted. Let's just, uh... Move across. And climb in. Because... You know, we'll just trust that this won't lead to our deaths. And we get a little guided tour of the Citadel. Pipes, verticality, black metal, loading screen. So the Citadel, you know, it's, it's obviously it's, it's fictional. There's no real-world architecture to base this on. Whereas, you know, most of the game so far, it's based on research of the real world. This bit is completely speculative. It's completely imaginary. Very tall, very narrow. Stalkers, combine guys. You know, the mechanized nature of, of everything and the way they, they're treating people. You, like, you assume that there's people in those parts. I think it's, it's very easy to make, you know, machinery and robots seem very inhuman and intimidating. I don't know if that's fair, but that's how it is. You know, it's striders and various things. Again, like very tall things. And obviously being tall there. It implies that they're stronger than you, or they're more powerful than you. Soldiers being deployed.
gunships being assembled. That's kind of cool. Trains. I mean, if it were not for the fact that the Combine are trying to enslave us, you know, the way they make use of different technologies is, is quite interesting. I mean, it seems like Striders are, you know, genetically modified life forms of some sort, and then same with the gunships, although I guess they're sort of cybernetic beings, and, you know, they incorporate human trains as a part of their technology, so they're assimilating a lot of different species, I guess. Oh, that's what it appears they're doing. And we lose our guns. Goodbye. Singularity device. That's what they call this thing. Uh, what do they call it? Zero point energy field manipulator. That's what it's called. So, oh, hi. this is Dr. Freeman. At last. I wish I could say this was a pleasant surprise, but it's neither a surprise nor, as you will surely agree, very pleasant. Well, I am nothing if not pragmatic. Yeah, well, that's what I think about you. Anyway, we are inside the Citadel and... Uh, and we're getting shot. Well, I mean, not too much to say about the architecture, aside from what's already been said. Zap. 